Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. We have done a collaboration with Magma Bags at DJ City. We have produced this little USB carrying case for your USB drives and SD cards, etc. It's really good, but I can't review it because it's got our name on it and I can't objectively review something with our name on it. But you guys and girls, if you watch the channel on a regular basis, you know I'm really into Magma products. I use their stuff all the time. You can see the Festival Dirt on the bottom of this trolley. I will be reviewing this one soon along with some other bits, but yeah. So I can't review this as a product, but I thought what I would do is look at this as a jumping off point to answer a couple of questions which I get asked on a regular basis. People are forever asking me about which USB sticks to use, and they're also asking me about which external hard drive to buy. And I've got a slight curveball when it comes to external hard drives. First of all though, let's talk about USB sticks. The aspect of USB sticks which is most important, but often misunderstood, is speed. Why is speed so important? Well, it's not really so much for playback. Four WAV or AIFF files streamed at once to four media players from one stick, will demand less than one megabyte per second read speed, which almost any USB 2 drive will handle. A faster read speed can help the players feel more snappy when it comes to browsing and searching for tracks, but mostly the bottleneck there is in the processing power of the players themselves. Write speed, however, is hugely important if you don't want to spend hours waiting for your files to transfer from your software, record box or engine prime to your stick. The first thing to understand is that there are three USB standards which you'll come across in 2018. USB 2.0, USB 3.0 and USB 3.1. All are backwards compatible, but speed will be reliant on your computer's port specs. Now, those all have massively different theoretical maximum speeds, but just because a drive is marked as one or the other doesn't actually reflect its real-world speed at all. For example, when I first started messing around with standalone playback, I bought some sticks like this one, the Kingston SE9. I have a desktop Mac with USB 3.0 ports, and it's a USB 3.0 stick, so that's going to be fast, right? Wrong. In reality, it was slower than the super cheap USB 2 SanDisks I'd had for general usage up to that point. Absolutely awful. So how do we know what is actually fast? Well, I generally suggest you buy USB sticks or SD cards from Amazon, and no third-party sellers, just Amazon Direct. And when you look at a stick, you'll usually find charts like these in the reviews. This is a crystal disk mark test, which gives you a rough guide to the real-world speed of a device. It's a free app for Windows if you want to check your existing media, and I'm using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test on the Mac, which is also free. Things you can immediately discount are sticks like this promotional one I picked up at a trade show. It is slow as hell. Much better are these, SanDisk Cruiser Flares. They're USB 3.0. I was put onto these by James Hype, and now I have four of them. They're my regular go-to sticks. Not the fastest out there, but quick enough, and they're very, very affordable. Prior to the flares, I was using a lot of these, the SanDisk Ultra Fit 3.0. Again, decent speed, and they're so tiny they're right out of the way when sticking out the top of a CDJ. Beware though, judging by the speed tests on Amazon, the more recent USB 3.1 version is dog slow, so that one should be avoided. If you want the ultimate in speed from a stick, SanDisk's Extreme Range are the ones. These were the ones that Pioneer DJ staff used to recommend to me, and they really are like rockets. Only downside is they are pretty massive, very hard to lose, but also very easy to knock if you're at all clumsy. I've had the regular Extremes and a Pro version, and they've all been great. There's one type of stick which I've had no luck with, and some people do swear by Kingston for their USB sticks, but I picked up this HyperX 128GB stick, and that one died on me, completely corrupted, after about two weeks. So that one I didn't get on well with. Another one is the Corsair Survivor range. Now, some people do seem to recommend those, but if you go onto Pioneer DJ's forum, you'll actually see that they really don't recommend them for use with CDJs, and in particular XDJs, but apparently the GTX models are very good. A note on capacity, the smart thing to do is format as FAT32, as it's the most compatible across different devices and operating systems. That's easy enough to do on a Mac, but on Windows you will need third-party software to format anything larger than 32GB in FAT32. 64GB is generally the sweet spot for most people, that's around 5,000 tracks in MP3 format, enough for even open format work, and they'll work in even the oldest media players. I do have a bunch of 128GB sticks though, which gives me even more to choose from. 
Whilst 128 gigabytes is generally enough for me, a while back I decided to push things a little further and picked up this Kingston 256 gigabyte SD card. Why an SD card? Well, the CDJ2000 Nexus, the Nexus 2s and Denon DJ's Prime series all feature SD card slots and the beauty of an SD card is that it goes right into the device. Super hard for someone to steal or to knock and if I'm doing a changeover with other DJs, the SD card slots are usually free which makes that changeover easier. I still carry sticks as well as not all players support cards but if I have the choice I'm always on an SD card. Anyway back to the Kingston 256 gigabyte card. Speeds are decent and I was stoked to find that most players cope fine with that amount of tracks up to 20,000 mp3 files. Although I'm usually a SanDisk user it's really impressed me with its durability too still going strong after two years. When it comes to SanDisk cards, I use their extreme range for both DJing and video work. They have good speeds which improve with every product revision, and out of over a dozen cards I've only ever had one die since 2013. Definitely worth considering if you generally use high-end players. Finally, let's talk external hard drives. At this point now, it's really hard to recommend an old school spinning hard drive for any purpose, unless you need terabytes and terabytes of space. Some people still have concerns about the lifespan of solid state SSD drives, but I'll take that over the inherent fragility of spinning drives all day long. No more worries about vibration or the drive being dropped or heat. SSD is just the way forward. It's also much, much faster too. This is a 7200 RPM drive, about as fast as a consumer spinning drive I've ever gets and it gets absolutely smoked by this western digital my passport ssd i've been really impressed by the wd ssd it's barely larger than the bigger sandisk sticks but comes in sizes up to a terabyte super solid and reliable the only downside is the price it's pretty expensive so here's my great value alternative. Buy a regular 2.5 inch SSD and a separate enclosure. This 500 gigabyte crucial SSD cost me under $100 and combined with one of these really simple $10 Ugreen USB 3.0 caddies, I've got a super fast, super reliable external SSD for comparatively peanuts. Plus, if the enclosure dies, just throw that drive into a new one. With the price of regular SSDs getting ever cheaper, this is going to be my standard external drive setup moving forward. So there you go, the kind of products which I'll be keeping in my Magma and DJ City USB storage pouch. Look, I can't do the sales thing, it's not really my tip, okay? It's a good little pouch, it does the job. The main thing is you've got to look after your media, but you've got to choose the right media. And for me, it's always worked out to be SanDisk, it may be other brands for you. If you find something that works for you, duplicate it. If you find a USB stick you like, buy a couple more three more, maybe carry four of them because you want that reliability, you want that backup if stuff gets lost, stuff gets broken, you need to be able to keep the party going. And when it comes to external drives, definitely SSD is the way forward. I know they cost a lot more than spinning drives, but the reliability factor, as far as I'm concerned, is way, way above old spinning platter drives. So that is the way forward as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you have any other questions which I might be able to answer in an episode, do drop them in the comments below and maybe we'll do a future episode which is just focused on Q&A, that kind of stuff. I think that might be interesting to do as we approach the end of 2018. Thank you for watching today. Do make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a future video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. I'll see you soon.